it's true that the scriptures record instances of Jesus socializing. For instance, he went to a wedding feast at Cana, and he also turned water into wine there. But a lot of Christians are left in the middle because we do not know when to draw the line between actually hanging out for fun and then leading or exposing ourselves into sin. I am Nonso Igwe and I welcome you to another episode on Catholic Faith Forum. Today we're going to be discussing socializing as a Christian. When we come back, we'll meet our guests and dive into our discussion. Stay with us. Welcome back, this is Catholic Faith Forum, and today we'll be discussing socializing as a Christian. I have here with me Gospel Ejachi. He is a Christian hip hop artist and a spoken word artist. He also started a youth movement called Third Day Renaissance, and they basically go into campus and preach the gospel. That's so interesting, Gospel. Yeah, thank and you're you. welcome to today's episode. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yay! So you said you're excited. Because you're a spoken word at it. Yeah. Can you like give us something? Just do something small for us. Let us just mm. calm ourselves down. Mm. This time I don't speak as a boy. I speak as a prophet. Let my lyrics be more than words. And let my life be the gospel. This is a feast of blood. Prepare me a banquet. Oh, you bearers of his cups. Tonight we're going bloodthirst. Welcome to the manifestation of kings. This night is the manifestation of me. Tonight I make a demand to be revealed as Christ, the true manifestation of him. Thank you. Woohoo! <laughs> this is so nice. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Let me clap for you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So what is socializing as a Christian to you? Yeah, thank you so very much. Um, so I, the way I see socializing is simple, interacting with the environment, interacting with your community. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, particularly, I say being present, being present in your neighborhood, being present in church, being present in school, being involved, not being lost, not being, you know, not just trying to separate yourself because we've always had that problem yes. where they'll say, oh, you, you are Christians and then they are non-Christians, you know, stay away from them. And generally, we've always had that mentality of we're not with them, we don't belong with them, we're just doing our thing. So I think um, Christian socializing is, you know, is the concept of, you know, we taking uh, you know, the, I, I believe that the height of your spiritual growth is when you can tangibly represent what God is doing inside of you out there. Yes. You get, so that's Christian socializing so you, for me. you talked about, I mean, separating yourself. Yeah. And the scripture clearly, clearly tells us how Jesus, I mean, goes to dine with tax collectors, yeah. goes to dine with people who the people have called um, prostitutes or people who they've, they've seen an outcast in society. Yeah. What are the implications of this example that I cited now to Christians out there? Yeah, let's, let's take Jesus for example. Why was he there? Okay. Because the end is, 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 what, is what matters. Jesus, and Jesus categorically, you know, stated that his, the, the job, the, the work the Father sent him was to the sinners and not to the righteous people. I think that's Mark chapter 2, where this very example you gave me came from. Yes. And he said, you know, only sick people need doctors. Exactly. So what is the relationship between sick people and doctors? Doctors treat sick people. So he had already defined why he was there. He's going there as a doctor to treat sick people who are sinners. And every time Jesus met with them, they gave their lives to Christ. I mean, oh, anytime Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. anytime Jesus met exactly. with them, you know, they, they changed. They got born again. They joined the family of God. So to what end? Why are you going there? I mean, Jesus was not just going there to hang out. Jesus was going there to do the Father's work. So it, it goes back to why are you there? Why are you going there? Because uh, I, I don't just want to say go and don't go. Because I know a lot of people who, like Jesus, they are, they, are, they, they, they are sent to places like that. They are sent to bars to preach the gospel. I know people with special ministry for bars. And I, I've even gone out with you know one of them a particular time. So even, even when you talk about being sent there, you talk about being sent, are you sent there? That is, if you're talking about, oh, I want to go and preach the gospel, are you sent there? Because okay. Jesus said he was sent I don't know if you get that. Yeah, I get it. I get it. So you're talking about going there to preach the gospel. Yeah. What if I want to go there and have fun? 
Okay, well, like I said, it's not a do or don't thing. You're going there to have fun, fine, but they, you have to understand that it's an environment that is out of our control. Exactly. It's an environment that is out of our control. You will not, you can't determine what is coming at you, what you will see, what you will experience. I mean, I'm not even talking about, you know what it is when uh, uh, non-believers gather? You cannot tell what will happen when unrighteous people are together. So you, there are things you can't control. You can't control drugs moving around. You can't control naked women. You know, you know, you can't control the drinks and everything. So it's not your environment. It's not an environment that was naturally designed for you. So you will, you will have problem with, because it's not your setting. If it is church, we know how church is. If it, you know, if you're meeting with other saints, you know how it is. But here is beyond your control. Someone can fighting is a normal thing in places like that. I mean, sometimes when we talk about topics like they want to even start with the big, big things. Let's start with the small things. We know what happens when non-believers gather, even in little out in little hangouts like you know little parties they throw in school we, we see what happens at the end of this thing so it, you, it is out of your control to begin with so do you think that christian socialize socializing should be restricted to going to fellowship i mean visiting your your brothers or sisters at their houses that are christians yes no I believe Christian socializing should go beyond, you know, you know, people who are in the fold, in the, who are Christians with us, mm -hmm. because um, um, I've seen one of the problem evangelism has always had is that we we don't love them, we don't relate with them, we don't make friends with them, we don't talk with them, and then we suddenly ambush them with the message of the gospel. So at the end of the day, you find them defensive because I mean, you're only talking to me because you want to preach to me. I've seen you all the time, you know, you know, moving around here. You've never, you know, you don't, you don't see anything. I mean, beyond that, there are people too. And when you even talk about this, uh, associating with them, some of them are even our relatives. Some of them are brothers, sisters. So, so how do you deal with that? I can't say you don't have to relay with them. You relay with them, you talk to them. That's the essence. You relay with them, you love them genuinely. Then you will discover that you've preached the gospel without preaching a sermon. Hmm. Thank you so much. Let's go on this short break. When we come back, we'll talk more on socializing as a Christian. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is still Catholic Faith from, and uh, we're discussing socializing as a Christian. And I have here with me Gospel Ejachi. I really thank love you. your name, Gospel. When I, I'm like, oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank my parents so, too. So some some the major forms of socialization or socializing rather mm -hmm. are, are maybe like going to the bar, going to the club, I mean, going out basically. So what do you think for Christians now? I know you talked about how it's not restricted to to um, being at fellowship or going yeah, to church. Yeah. So what if I find myself there as a Christian present? Mm -hmm. What are some steps that I should take? What should I do? in those situations. If, in, for instance, if I go to a bar yeah. or I go and hang out with my friends somewhere, what are the things that I should look out for? Well, uh, first of all, you have to know your boundaries. You have to know your boundaries. What can you do? What can you not do? It begins with that because like I earlier stated, it's an environment that is beyond your control. Yeah. So try as much as you can to be the one influencing and not the one being influenced. And it begins with us being bold about our faith. A lot of people, we don't know what we carry is value. So a lot of time when we see other options, we are quick to lay ours down. No, we have the gospel. We have the message. We have the hope. We have the hope of the world. So first of all, don't see yourself like, oh, I'm the one that my life is not excited. I'm the Christian. I'm No, you have to, you know, first of all, understand that you as a believer, you are the one the world needs. So influence your em environment. And I believe that uh, uh, if you and your friends, you know, haven't been friends for a long time. How have you been relating with them? Because it didn't, be, it didn't begin from the bar. Yes. You guys must have. So what kind of friend have you been? Have you been the one that just succumbed to every suggestion from them? Or you've been the one that, you know, what, all I'm trying to say is be the one influencing. Be the one influencing and stand your ground. Be firm with what you want to do and what you don't want to do because we've been in situations like that before where they offer you drink. Where they, if you're not drinking, say you're not drinking and don't be shy about it. Exactly. Be bold, be unashamed. I don't drink. I'm a believer. I don't do this. I'm, you know, if, if, if just stand, be, be firm on what you believe. Be the one influencing. Don't yeah. just fall for anything. Okay, so when you talk about being at the bar and drinking, I know that. 
for, for a fact, I know that there are a lot of Christians that are actually in those settings yeah. and they drink and do yeah. all sorts of... Yeah. So what are the implications of a Christian being a party animal or a regular drinker? Mm. Let, let, let me begin with this. Let me begin with this. As Christians, we have to uh, first of all realize that Christianity was birthed on the foundation of sacrifice. It costs God something. Sacrifice, not just Christ. You know, fathers before us have paid certain price for this Christianity that we have today. And when yes. I say sacrifice, it's not just, you know, sacrificing sin, you know, that you gave up sin. It's not that. I'm talking about things that you feel are lawfully, you know, that if things that you feel you, you justified to do. I'm not talking about sacrificing sin. I'm talking about things you feel justified to do. You know, like Paul said, they of things are permissive, you know, but, you know, I, I choose not to do them so that I don't bring myself as slave under these things, so that I don't make these things master over, over me. me. The truth is that we have to understand that as Christians, we are sent here. We have, we, we, we represent something that is bigger than ourselves. So, you know, it doesn't matter because if the, the more we keep saying do it or don't do it, we will never strike the point. Exactly. It's not about doing it or don't doing it. Understanding that we represent something bigger than ourselves. We carry a message. We're here on a mission. We have an agenda. We're not just here, you know, it, this whole, you know, it's not a casual thing the way we want it, sorry to say. But the truth is that even the fact that you're a Christian already means you gave up something. So you should understand that the concept of Christianity is an idea, ideology that will always make you give up something. Because you gave something to be here. So you will always give up something. So it's more than you. Christianity is more than you. We're here for something. Mm -hmm. We're representing Christ. Yes. We're representing Christ. So, you know, so it's not even, um, I, I decided to start from there because a lot of time when you say, ah, do it, don't, don't do, it, do it, you never always strike the point. It's not about, it's not about, in fact, there is nothing wrong with doing it and uh, it will do nothing to you to do it and it will do nothing to you not, not to, to do, do it. it. But the fact is that you, me, gospel, I represent something that is way bigger than that. So if the, the concept of Christianity if is clear to you, you will know that it's not even a topic, you know, uh, drinking or not drinking is not a topic because we have more bigger issues to deal with, like Jesus is coming. <laughs> you, you get, like, so, so, yeah. it, it so we represent something bigger than this thing and it's time for us to awaken, you know, to this consciousness, to know that we are here on a mission, we are representing an agenda. So everything should point to the agenda. Hmm, nice. So now back to um, drinking or not drinking. Yeah. How do I handle my friendship with someone who drinks or smokes regularly? Oh. And I'm always in company of that person. Yeah, uh, first of all, I wouldn't, um, I, I wouldn't advise that a Christian, you know, when we talk about um, socializing, mm -hmm. you know, it's different from, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's not necessarily uh, that you're friends with them. It means you interact with them. But if your close cycles, your close cycle, if your, your, your best friend is someone who do something like this, I, I think you're going to have a, you know, a little bit of problem because, you know, it's like, um, you know, the Bible spoke, the Bible speaks about being unequally yoked. You get, you know, you know, it's like when you put uh, an ox with a sheep. You know, and then, you know, it's not, they're not the same size. They're not the same kind of animals. They don't have the same kind of strength. You're yes. going to, you're going to experience a lot of things. So it's not that if the father, you have a, a best friend as, as, as a non-Christian already is an issue. It's an issue. And I wouldn't advise that. But in a situation where you do, then the truth is that. You are like, you know, it's, it's similar to what I said the other time about, you know, you've been in a bar. You have to be the one doing the influencing. Exactly. And you have to know that it is your mission. Because see, every non-believer you see, known or unknown to them, represent an agenda. The same way you two represent an agenda. I mean, Matthew 28, 18, it says, go ye. We represent exactly. an agenda. So you should also know that they too represent an agenda. Where the, uh, the Bible described the, the them as, uh, the, I mean, the devil as being their father and his biddings they will do, whether they know it or not. You get So if you don't get them, they might They'll eventually get, get you. you. Yeah, we all have an agenda. So you're either winning them or they're winning you. Hmm, nice report. Just hold that thought there. Don't go anywhere. When we come back from this short break, we are going to continue our discussion. Stay with us.
Welcome back. This is still Catholic Faith Firm, and I'm talking about socializing as a Christian with gospel ejachi. So the final question for today is, okay. so since we've talked about, okay, drinking, smoking, and all other forms of um, um, socializing that might lead you to sin, mm. and then it's not an issue whether you do it or mm. don't do it. Mm. So now, yeah. what are some forms of socializing that mm. Christians should conform to? Yeah, uh, you can go to birthday parties. I mean, <laughs> but they drink at birthday parties now. Yes, now you have to understand that we cannot completely avoid them if we will have to socialize at one point. So yeah. if you are not even going to a birthday party, what about events in office, you know, workplaces? They are there too. So that is why you see, um, we also have the issue of you being the one influencing, you mm -hmm. standing your ground, be firm, be bold about the gospel, know that what you carry has value, don't be intimidated. We have a lot of intimidated believers everywhere. We have believers who are ashamed, shy to tell you they are <laughs> believers. You get, so we have to outgrow those limitations, be bold about it. Hey, my name is gospel, this is what I believe. This is what I believe. Uh, you know, this is what I do. I'm a believer. I'm a preacher. You know, and be bold about it, no matter what what comes. And <laughs> the the truth is that you will find yourself in situations where they might even mock you and everything. Yes. But yeah, that's it. Or I mean, say that you are holy, holy, or yeah, you are not sharp. Yeah, it happens. Sharp. It happens a lot. You <laughs> see, you see, the thing about Christianity is that you know you the, the, you have to embrace that you know a shame and embarrassment that comes with it. Sometimes you are, it, it's just like you proclaiming the gospel someone and say get out of here you know you have to you know put yourself we, we, exactly. you know, that's, the, that's the fate we are in we, we always have those things so yeah you have to understand boundaries understand boundaries it's just like me sitting at a table where they are doing drugs i must not be at that very table can you, stand up. you can stand up and then you move yeah and you know uh you be in a place where you can you, you can make your cho choices they they bring drinks you select the ones you can take you leave the other one so what we're trying to say is that you be in control be in exactly. control all the time as a believer as a believer i see it's painful to you know live the faith life as a young person, especially in the world that we are in. If I tell you it will not cost you, it's a lie. It will cost you, you will make some decisions, you will you you have to be bold, you have to, you know, face some kind of embarrassment. But yes, that's the faith. That's the faith and that's just the truth. So you have to be bold and try as much as you can. If it's possible, mm -hmm. avoid places like that. That's just the truth. Because, you know, when we address Christians, sometimes we forget that, they, you know, we, they are different kind of Christians. We are all not operating in the same, you know, level of possibilities. Exactly. Some are more, you know, advanced than the other. So if you discover that you are a weaker person, you must not go. Uh, my, my, my brother works with an advertising agency, and then there's some of those, you know, events he does not go. We, you know, you, you, have to, you have to be able to make, make such your own decisions, decisions yeah. here. Yeah, and what about moderation? Where's the place of moderation in all of this? I know that, mm. I mean, when we're even carrying out our socializing, mm. when we're trying to socialize other people, mm. we should do it in moderation so that mm. we're not over socializing yeah, or yeah. doing it in a way that they look at us like, why did you not even come say? Yeah. So what's the place of moderation in all of this? Uh, for example, whatever carries me from my house <laughs> to an event, I should already know that I'm not going to sit down somewhere pressing my phone. Exactly. You get, so you already made the decision to go. So you're, you're, you're going to have to socialize. You're going to have to talk, ask questions, you know, meet people, you know, do one or two things. And, and it's not, you, you, you already made the decision to go. So you don't just go there and then just start being awkward, being, you know. So when we talk about moderation, we're talking about, you know, what? I don't even think it's an issue because the, the average Christian um, in, the, in the social environment is even a lively person. I mean, when they talk about being active, it's not about smoking or drinking or doing drugs. You, you are happy, you are energetic, you talk to people, you're not shy, you look at them, hey, what do you do? Socialize. You know, it begins with, you know, uh, the first question where I say, you know, for a very long time, we have not learned how to be ourselves, how to be present, yeah, how to be present. present, you have to be present in an environment. So the fact that I'm not drinking does not mean I can't talk to people, I can't ask questions. There are many things you can do. So I think it's time for us to, you know, you know, get out of ourselves and then, you know, really, really represent, be a human being self, just talk like a normal person. 
you must not be drinking, you must not be smoking. There are many other things you can do. And there are some things in the event you can choose to do or, exactly. or not to do. I mean, a lot of things happen. There are mm. games, there are, you know, you choose what to do. Yeah. Thank you so much, Gospel, for this. It was a beautiful episode. Thank you for coming today to honor my invitation. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm welcome. excited, so excited to be doing this with you. Thank you. I wish to invite you some other time. Yeah, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sticking with us till the end. Like you know, if you want to socialize as a Christian, be in control, take charge, do it in moderation, and most importantly, be present. Thank you so much. We're not going anywhere until we learn a little or know your faith. Stay with us. Have you ever wondered what the mission of the Pope is? We know that Christ is the head of the church and Pope is the visible head of the church. Welcome to Know Your Faith series. My name is Judith and today we'll be talking about the mission of the Pope. The mission of the Pope is vicarious, magisterial and unitive. Vicarious meaning the Pope is the vicar of Christ. That is, he is the person of Christ on earth. So his mission is to represent Jesus Christ, who came to bring salvation to us. He is to us what Christ is to us. Second, magisterial. The Pope has the teaching authority of the church. As Jesus commanded him in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20, and even added a reassurance that he is with him always to the end of age. And that is why without the Pope, the meeting of the College of Bishops will be null and void. That is how valid the importance of the Pope is. Unitive. The Pope ensures the unity of the church. As the visible head of the church here on earth, he ensures that the family stays in peace and harmony. Hope you've gained something from today's episode, and I would like you to share this with your friends and encourage them to subscribe to our channel. Until next time, be bold, be Catholic. Welcome back. Thank you so much, KYF team. And you can get this episode and other episodes on our YouTube channel at Dominican Media Presents. Don't forget our chat room on Tuesdays by 7 p.m. with the hashtag CFF chat room at CFF on TV. To sponsor this show, kindly reach out to us on the number showing on the screen now. Or you can send us a mail at opmediang at gmail.com. Till I come your way next time, keep being saints in jeans and shirts. Bye.